how do you decide what to rely on more? Is one more important or do you fully rely on both of them, nonverbal and verbal communicating? I call it 50-50. Some people will say that it's over 90% body language. I don't believe that to be the case. I think words are just as powerful. And if anyone's ever written a nasty email or received a nasty email or yelled at someone on the phone, you can't get that back. You know, you can't get that back. It does long-term damage. One of my clients, Jennifer Wells, gave, gives a great metaphor. And she takes a paper plate and she has us put a straw into the paper plate. And imagine the last time you said something mean to one of your clients or to one of your employees or to one of your kids. And you put that straw on the plate. And she has all these straws sticking out of the plate. And so they're all sticking out. And then she says, but you say I'm sorry, so you take it away. And as she takes the straws out one by one, she holds up the paper plate and shows us what? There are 50 holes. That damage, our words are important, if not more important with, than body language. Detecting deception, it is proven that our word choices are actually more accurate on spotting the lies than body language. I got to know, do you find it hard to have real life conversations like the one we're having right now without analyzing everything that the person is saying? I, I, you know, it's like Jim Carrey in that movie, Bruce Almighty. Jim Carrey, the actor, becomes God, and all the prayers start coming in. He puts yes. them in sticky notes, and there's sticky notes everywhere. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> he comes in emails. Uh, I have to turn it on. It's not like Jim Carrey where he gets attacked by a bunch of prayers. I turn it on. It's a game for me. I love it. I love what I do. I, I have a blissful life. I change people's lives. I love it, and I see it. I hear from them. I see personal change. I hit the platform, sometimes I speak to 8,000 people in corporate America, and sometimes I'm talking to five executives at Coca-Cola, or 20 people at Procter & Gamble. And, but then I'm talking to the entrepreneur and his wife who are thinking of opening their own company. So I love it, I, I, I save lives in a different way. I say, my motto is, I save lives by boosting confidence, charisma, and careers. When you understand what people are saying with their words, really saying with their words, and what they're saying without their words, without saying a word, then that combination will, will take you from here to here on the wheel of success. So in your books, You Can't Lie to Me and You Say What You Think, are you giving businesses and um, the CEOs the tools to have the confidence in meetings to relay a positive image? Or what are you, what are you giving them? Yeah, this is my dream book. This is the book I was born to write. In, in You Can't Lie to Me, I break it down into multiple steps. So we talk about gathering intelligence. Then we talk about right here, what's going on in your face? What's going on in your face? We call that the stakeout. Micro expressions, disgust, contempt, um, ha genuine happiness, uh, fake happiness. What does that look like? Which of the seven emotions, happiness, sadness, fear, surprise, anger, contempt, and disgust, which one could indicate you are in danger and your company is in danger? Which one indicates, I sh in a job interview, I should not hire this person because they're going to create a revolution within your company, a revolution of hatred, a revolution of gossip? There's a facial expression that is a major hotspot that says your company could be in danger if you already have that person or if you're thinking of hiring that person. Then we do the body language, which is the full, full body surveillance. And then we have what's called wiretap. Wiretap is one of my favorite chapters because it's literally using the words, understanding people's words. I'll give you an example. If someone says to you, uh, I know you think I'm going to try to screw you over. I know you think when I'm telling you how much this car costs, 42000 I know you, I can tell you think I'm trying to screw you over. Well, what did they just tell you? I'm trying to screw you over. Instead of saying something more positive, literally people will say what they mean. They will say what they mean. I never killed my child. Well, I never killed my child. The word never is overcompensating. Never is overcompensating. So instead they would be saying, I didn't kill my child? Well, if I said to you, did you kill your child? I'm looking for what? No. No. Are you currently on heroin while doing this interview? No. Have you stolen over a million dollars from your company? No. You're not saying never. I would never steal a million dollars. I would never be on heroin on television. I would never kill a child. I would never is the future. Second of all, if they say never instead of no, it's like when a beautiful girl walks by an average looking guy. The guy might put his hands on his hips and appear bigger and broader than he is. It's called the broadside display. I am strong and healthy. Well, the word never does the same thing to the word no. It's overcompensating. In my book, I say there's three types of liars. 
And you see, I have, a, I have a tightrope walker over my head here. Essentially, all liars are walking a tightrope. And I call it taking care of business. I teach you how to take care of your business, TCB. Teeter-tottering, convinced not conveying, and backsliding. So the teeter-totterers are the people that walk on the tightrope like this. And they're walking across that skepticism of doubt to get to the other side. And the other side of the tightrope is where you believe their lie, where you believe their manipulation. So teeter-totterers do this. They change their language. Uh, Beth and I went to lunch. Beth and I went shopping. Uh, and then my, my employee that I shared the office with, uh, we then worked late that night. Why did you say Beth? Beth, my employee I share an office with. That now becomes a hotspot. Why? They change their language. Beth, Beth, change in the language, my employee that I share an office with. That becomes suspicious. You'd have to ask a powerful question. So those are the teeter-totters. The convinced not conveyors are the people that run across the tight road. These right here are the, the Scott Petersons of the world who killed his wife, Lacey, and unborn son, Connor. Uh, and then you have, who else? Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff. He was the convinced not conveyor. He would always bring out the steeple. Now, steepling is power, authority, and confidence. It's actually powerful. We see Donald Trump do it. You need to be concerned when you're asking questions about suspicious activity and they overcompensate. John Edwards, who was just found not guilty of stealing over a million dollars and giving it to his baby mama, in court, steepled the whole time. It's, it's, a, it's an over-the-top gesture while you're being sentenced, but it seemed to work for him. Maybe he manipulated the jury by looking overly confident. So be careful of those overly confident, convinced not conveyors. And then the last person on the tightrope are what we call backsliders. The backsliders are like this. These are the Sanduskies of the world. Their language changes. It's very passive. I would never, never do those things. No, it's not do those things. I would never molest that less kids. Or I never stole money from you, boss. I'm looking for Roger Clemens. Did you take steroids? Took him over three minutes to say, I never cheated in the game of baseball. Three minutes. The first three minutes, he's going back and forth about how great Roger Clemens is. And so you need to be careful in the business world with these people who are also the backsliders, the Jerry Sanduskies, the people who are doing what I call smoke screens. They're not answering your question. So if you look at these three roles, the teeter-totterers, convinced not conveyors, and backsliders, and you understand them, what that gets you is a clearer understanding on who's telling you the truth, who has your back, who doesn't have your back. And then what that ultimately gets you is a business that's going to grow from here to here.